It's time to fire this thing up. Those engine temperatures running at? Uh, let me check. We're running just a little over 180 degrees. Yeah, John, a little over 180. That's not good. Okay, what should the running temperature of big block Crusaders, these are big block Chevys, what should they be running at? They should be running 170, 175. Okay, what's the big deal? Five degrees, 10 degrees. Can that hurt an engine? Well, it's gonna, if we don't service them, it's gonna keep raising the temperature, and that's not good because eventually, you're gonna overheat. All right, this is Cleet Glasso, and Cleet is known as the part man. He is a true expert in marine parts, and if anybody knows an issue, it's gonna be this guy. But also, you have a real history with this boat. Your dad just purchased it two years ago from a customer, and, and he actually started a marina up here on the east end of Long Island. Okay, so he's been servicing the boat. What happened with the heat exchangers six years ago where we had kind of a similar issue with, with hot temperatures. Right, we had a similar issue. It was running over 180. We took the exchanges off, we sent them out, we had them cleaned out, we put new gaskets on, we reinstalled them, and it brought the temperature down to 170, 175, but now it's six years later and the temperature's starting to go back up over 180. So pretty sure as an expert, you're pinpointing it back to these heat exchangers. I'm almost positive it's the heat exchanger. Fantastic, and that's what we're gonna be covering today here at Shipshake TV. We're gonna learn about the different manufacturers who make heat exchangers. We're also gonna go through the installation process for you, and man, is the program gonna be packed full of tips. And speaking of tips, here's today's very first one. <laughs> It's windy, it's about to rain, and what you're looking at is the G-Man's 23-foot Albury Brothers boat. And if you examine the non-skid on the deck, you'll find that it's less than aggressive. And what happens is when water gets in between a deck shoe and that non-skid, or in between a bare foot and the non-skid, the surface turns pretty slippery, and if in the wrong place at the wrong time, could turn dangerous. Hi, I'm Eleanor Ekman from Intelux, and I'm gonna take you through how easy it is to apply an aggressive non-skid to the floor of your boat using our Perfection polyurethane paint. Where we will start is by masking off the areas on the boat that we would like to redo. A fine line masking tape for all of our outlined edges is preferred. And it's best to rub the tape with a cloth in order to heat up the adhesive and create a solid bond. We do not want our paint to bleed past the edge of the tape. Next, we'll use some fiberglass surface prep, manufactured by Inelux, and with a scotch pipe pad and heavy duty rubber gloves, we'll scrub the entire area down in order to remove any grease, wax, or other contaminants. Now, we'll simply wash down the deck with water and a hose, and if we see any areas where the water is beating up, we'll scrub it again. Once the surface is completely dry, we'll mix up our favorite color of perfection to part polyurethane paint and roll it out using a quarter inch nap foam roller. This is going to be our base coat of paint. Now, it's about 90 degrees today, so that will take about four hours to dry. You then roll on a second coat of Perfection Top Coat, and at this point is when we use our non-skid, the Inner Grip No-Skid Compound. What's really effective, use a nail, like a, a 10 penny nail, punch a bunch of holes in the can, use it as your own salt shaker, if you like, and put a lot of non-skid on. Don't be afraid of using a lot, spread it out evenly, and then you're gonna use the shop vac to vacuum up any excess. Your third coat will be your final coat. However, this time we'll add in flattening agent to the Perfection Top Coat. This will take it from a slick, glossy finish to a flat finish, which will help get that improved traction. It will also seal in your non-skid. For this and other tips on what you can do with your boat, log on to yachtpaint.com. Shipshape TV, the world leader in boat improvement, is being brought to you in part by Sunbrella Performance Fabrics, celebrating 50 years of providing shade from the sun, long-lasting beauty, and protection from the elements. With Sunbrella on board, we've got you covered. By the high-tech, low-maintenance Evinrude E-Tech. Evinrude, spend more time on the water. And finally by Ray Marine, 
world leaders in marine electronics. Fact. Fiberglass boats absorb water. Left unprotected, gel coat blisters can form, dramatically reducing the value of the boat upon resale. Want to protect your investment? Use Interprotect 2000E from Interlux. Interprotect, the industry-leading epoxy primer with microplates. Technology that blocks out water penetration, guarding your pride and joy from unsightly gel coat blisters. Think of it like shingles on a roof, only on your whole bottom, keeping things dry. Shed the water, shed those blisters with Interprotect 2000E. Welcome back. This is a real working 28-acre boatyard slash boat building facility residing in Stewart, Florida. It's ShipShape TV's home base. Ideally located, the complex is situated on the shores of the Okeechobee Waterway, which happens to connect the Atlantic Ocean to the Gulf of Mexico. Now once again, here's the founder and host of ShipShape TV, John Graviscus. What you're looking at is about a 10-year-old heat exchanger that's been boiled out about five years ago, and now it's starting to leak. Thanks, Buck, great introduction. We are in Riverhead, New York, at Lighthouse Marine Supply, and I wanna introduce you to a really good friend of mine. This is Cleet Glasso, the owner. Hey, John. Hey, my friend, how are you? Good, good to see you. You've been on the program a ton of times, and your dad now is the owner of this 35-foot Tierra. All right. right. And you've serviced this boat since 1999. Right. What, what, what happened to the heat exchanger in 2006? Well, in 2006, the boat was running a little warm. So as preventative maintenance, we took the heat exchanger off and we had it boiled out at a radiator shop. Okay, and what happens when you have one of these heat exchangers boiled out is they're gonna pump acid through that copper and you can get away with it one time. Right. Okay, but you can't do this more than once because what happens is that acid is so strong on that copper is it kind of starts to weaken it. Think about a, a piece of copper and you start flexing it back and forth. Okay, eventually it's gonna break, okay? So a heat exchanger, the shelf life, what, how long do these parts last? Usually about 10 to 12 years, Okay. A heat exchanger. What gets inside a heat exchanger to where you have to boil them out? Well, on the one side you have the salt water. You'll pick up little bits of sand, you'll pick up some seaweed, some shells, and on the freshwater side on the, where the antifreeze is, you'll build a, a film on the copper tubes. You'll build a film and what will happen is you'll have less heat transfer between the salt water side and the freshwater side. Let's back up a little bit. New boats, when they're sold, these marine engines don't come with this part generally on them, do Not they? Not usually, no. Okay. And, and there's a reason for that. If you're going to be boating in fresh water in a lake, you don't need it. You can use that raw water to cool the engine and the cool the manifold and, and all that, right? right? But us guys that boat in salt water, man, is that different. You want to, the reason you might want to have a part like this, guys, is you might not want that salt corrosive water flowing through the water jackets on your cast iron engine or through aluminum parts. Right. Okay? Well, most of the new intake manifolds are aluminum, and we know what uh, salt water does to aluminum. It rots it out quick. Okay, so, so you might want to think about at home, if you have a boat and you boat in salt water or brackish water, you might want to think about adding a heat exchanger to your boat. Correct. You might have a boat that has a heat exchanger on and you might need to either maintain it or you might need to replace it. And, and, and what, what is, can, can we show everybody at home, what, what is this right here? Well, these are the tubes that are inside the heat exchanger and the salt water runs through one side and then the antifreeze runs through this side and it flows over the tubes and then the salt water cools the antifreeze. And we're gonna be going with a C camp unit on each one of these engines, correct? Correct. Well, why do you personally like these C camps? Well, they, they use heavy metal in the copper. They use heavier fittings here. You'll notice sometimes when you put on a hose clamp, you'll crush this, but on a C camp, you're less likely to crush them. And they also redesign and re-engineer some of the heat exchangers. Instead of it being a one pass or a two pass, they'll make a one pass into a two pass and a two pass into a four pass. So when you have the salt water going through multiple times, it helps cool the fresh water or antifreeze on the other side. If somebody at home wanted to maybe add a heat exchanger to their boat, or somebody needed to replace it, or somebody just needed some parts, do you have a resource for people to get connected to? Yes, log on to our website, 
www.partman.com. Ship TV will be back in a flash. This right here is a perfect example of a thinner wall heat exchanger where if you get a clamp on it too tight, you could crush it. Welcome back. We are going to be replacing some heat exchangers today here at Shipshake TV. And we have changed locations on you. We're now across the street at Lighthouse Marina. And Cleet's dad, Larry, started this. He's the owner of the boat. Okay. And now Alex, Cleet's brother, runs this side. Cleet sells the parts. And I want to introduce you to our next expert guest. This is Steve Willenbachus. Hi, Steve. Steve's the head mechanic out here at the marina, and he's going to be overseeing all of the work. Let's talk a little bit about what we need to do. Give us some tips on how we can do this project with very minimal uh, labor. Pretty much what you'd like to do is make sure the engine hasn't ran in three to four hours, just so it's cool and more comfortable to work on, and also so you don't get burned if the antifreeze is hot. Okay. And where, where, where does the antifreeze get removed from? Is it the heat exchanger or is it from the engine or is it both? Sometimes it's both. Um, usually you have two plugs on the block um, right above the oil pan. You're going to want to remove those. And on this particular model, you have a drain plug on the bottom. Okay. So when you're evacuating the antifreeze, you want to collect that. Okay. And space is kind of tight. Tight, yeah. So you might not be you might not be able to use a five gallon bucket, use a smaller one, put it yeah, into a five gallon bucket. Usually, you know, we'll use like a small, you know, five quart or sometimes a one or two quart bucket just to help catch it. Now, we have how many hoses that are holding on our heat exchanger? Well typically you have some salt water hoses that come in and some fresh water cooling hoses. And usually they're clamped on by one clamp. You want to remove the clamp and then take the hose off of the fitting. And typically the exchanger on this model is mounted by two hose clamps. And you're going to want to remove those and then you're ready to remove the exchanger. How many gallons is each engine going to require for antifreeze? Typically this unit will use about three gallons of antifreeze, but by the time you mix it with water, it'll be about six total. Okay. Now think of a heat exchanger as like an increments of five years. Okay. The first five years you can remove it and have it boiled out. Uh, that's when you want to change out the oil cooler, which kind of works on the same technology. Same okay. And then, uh, you know, the second time that you go probably to replace it after 10 years, again, that's a five-year increment, change, change out those. your oil coolers. Great tips, Steve. I really appreciate it. No problem. And speaking of tips, guys, here's today's next invaluable one. Let's go ahead and roll it. One of the great things about boating is that tropical tan that your skin can get when exposed to sunlight. However, with too much exposure, it's possible to become sunburned. Hi, I'm Bill McDaniel with Glen Raven Custom Fabrics, the makers of Sunbrella. And just like air skin, your gauges, bezels, and any expensive marine electronics that you may have on your dash area, if left unprotected, can get absolutely destroyed with too much exposure to direct or indirect sunlight. So how do we prolong their beauty and lifespan? Simple. Here's how it's done. Contact your local canvas shop, have them come out where you keep the boat, and they'll pull a pattern for the area that you'll want covered and protected. They'll then take that pattern back to their shop and overlay it on a roll of Sunbrella and cut the shape with a special heated electronic knife. Now, the great thing about this idea is that when you have your Sunbrella dash cover made, you can actually have it made from the same color fabric as is used on your T-top or, or Bimini top or whatever shade might be on the boat. What this gives you is style, color, and function. Now, back at the canvas shop, your fabricator will have to sew all the edges, incorporate fasteners in the fabric, then at your boat, attach some type of either snap or other popular fastener to your dash. Once installed, you'll be completely protected anytime your boat is not in use and being stored. For more information on Sunbrella, where to find the local canvas shop, or for color selection, log on to sunbrella.com forward slash shipshape. Don't pull the plug. The boats, the tools, and ShipShape TV will be back in a snap. For long-lasting beauty on biminis, sail covers, seat cushions, and interior upholstery below deck and in cabins, start with Sunbrella. And then, just add water. For decades, only one fabric has been able to stand up to the relentless speed of the sun, wind, and salt water. 
To learn more about Sunbrella and its best-in-class warranty, visit sunbrella.com slash shipshape. Oh, hey, we are thrilled that you're still with us. Uh, let me real quick grab this tool bag. I need to strap it on. There's a couple of key issues that need to get dealt with down in the engine room. This week's In the Engine Room segment is being brought to you by Henkel and its popular line of Loctite branded adhesives and sealants. When it comes to reliable thread locking, bonding, and sealing in your engine room, professionals trust Loctite branded adhesives and sealants to do the job. What you're looking at is the finishing touches on the motor bed of a 22-foot shamrock that a friend of mine, Bruce King, owns. Hey, welcome back. This is now the segment of the program that we call In the Engine Room. And Bruce had his 351 Ford Windsor engine rebuilt. It was knocking, okay, and it's time to put it back into the boat. It's time to put it back into that engine bed, and that leads us to our next expert guest. This is Tom Buckley. Hi, Tom. Hi, John. Tom is with the industrial division of Henkel Corporation. And Henkel makes Loctite. Whenever you're talking about working on the engine in a boat and Loctite, man, these two things are hand and glove, okay? They really go together. And let, let's talk a little bit about Bruce's engine, Tom. He sent it off to have it rebuilt. Uh, it's back now. And whenever you do that, you have to take off the flywheel. You have to disassemble it from the powertrain, okay? Well, it's time to reattach that flywheel to the back of the engine. What is its function on uh, the starting of an engine? The flywheel is attached to the engine and the starter actually kicks the flywheel to get the engine going. Okay. Now, if you don't use any type of a thread locker on the bolts, what could happen? Okay, because this flywheel is spinning at a high RPM. Right. And there's a lot of movement there and there's a lot of airspace in a threaded assembly. And when a bolt is not tightly fastened and not secured with a thread locker, it can rattle out and it can happen very quickly. Okay, so we need to use some type of a thread locker and Loctite, I mean, that's, that's what you guys are, okay? Mm -hmm. you, you make a lot of products, but you really are known for the thread locker. Now, I know that there's different colors of thread locker, Tom. Where would you use red thread locker and where would you use blue? Because those are the two main colors, right? Yeah, red and blue are the most common. And the red thread locker is what we call our high strength. And high strength, you want to think about applications where you do not want to take it apart. Because the only way to get it apart is to bring heat and actually break down the adhesive. Do we want to use red there for the flywheel or do we want to use your blue? Anytime you're going to do a repair over and over, you want to use our blue thread locker or our removable grade. And what this is, is an adhesive that's going to give you a slightly lower strength that you can remove with a hand tool. Okay. I want to talk about the importance of cleaning any oil or any type of contamination from the actual threads, okay, what you're trying to bolt into. Traditionally, if there's oil, will a thread locker bond? Now, a thread locker is going to have a tough time bonding through oil, and that's for two reasons. One, the oil is stopping the adhesive from getting to the metal, and this is an anaerobic adhesive, so the way that it cures is once it's in the joint and air is removed, it starts to cure from the absence of air and the presence of metal ions. Okay, that's why, guys, if, if you have some of this thread locker on the outside of that bolt, Okay, you'll notice that it never really cures or anything like that. It's, it, it won't unless there's no right. air present. Okay, so, th so that's very important. Okay, let, let's talk about active metals and let's talk about inactive metals, guys. Okay, active metal is like iron. Okay, your, 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 your cast iron blocks. That would be an active metal because it, it, it will rust, it will oxidize, okay? In marine engines, oftentimes we're putting stainless steel inactive metals into a, a hole that has an uh, active metal, okay? Now, traditionally, with thread lockers, you would have to use what on stainless steel? Uh, primer is gonna be needed on stainless steel or any other plated fastener that won't rust. So anything that you're buying so that it won't rust, you're gonna wanna use a primer to make the product cure. Now, your 243 thread locker, okay, will that bite through 
any oil. Yeah, 243 is one of our newest technologies and it is a primerless grade. So it can bond to all kinds of metal surfaces, whether they're active or not. And it's oil tolerant, so it can bite through small amounts of contamination. Okay, this is a brand new exciting product that we want people to learn about. Yeah, okay. it takes a step out and just makes it a little easier on everyone. Where can people buy the, the, the thread locker? Where can people buy the different Loctite products? Do you have a resource at all? Yeah, these products are available through our industrial distributors. And on our website, henkelna.com slash industrial, we have a distributor locator. In industrial shops and garages all over the world, professionals have trusted one name for over 50 years, Loctite. New Loctite Quick Sticks, the no-mess answer to securely locking nuts, bolts, and screws. Loctite products are now available in an easy-to-use stick. Convenient and portable Loctite makes it easy to choose the thread locker or sealant that's right for any job, anywhere. Pros know there's only one name to trust. Go to LoctitePro.com for more. With Loctite, job done. That's right, our project today is pretty much complete, which means we're now back on the water with John. What you're looking at is beautiful Peconic Bay here on the east end of Long Island. And it's very well known for the scallops, uh, delicious scallops here on this That's body right. of water. Yep. And we have successfully installed some heat exchangers today here at ShipShake TV. We again have Cleet Galasso. Cleet is known as the part man and dude, you have so much information. Let's talk about it. We've, we've installed these heat exchangers. Give us some more tips, okay? What do we do with the, with the coolant to make sure that we don't have air in the system? Well, what we want to do is we want to, after we get the heat exchanger installed and all the hoses hooked up, we want to fill the heat exchanger very slowly so we get the air out. And then we want to put the radiator cap on. We want to start the engine up, bring it up to temperature, let it cool down, open up the radiator cap, and top it off if we need a little more coolant. And we want to start it back up again, and we want to check all the hoses and hose clamps to make sure we have no leaks. Well, we've been running around here out on Peconic Bay for about a half hour. The engines have, have more than warmed right. up. What's the temperature now of the engines? We're at 175. And that's where they're supposed to be? That's perfect. Now, you have quite a few people here on staff, OK? Right. And everybody is very knowledgeable with these marine parts. When somebody calls you or when somebody goes online and they order a part from you, do you also offer service from all of these years and years of experience from your staff to the people that are doing business with you? Oh, definitely, John. I mean, if you buy something from us and you need help installing it or you can't read the instructions or you need help troubleshooting it, we stay with you. If you buy it from us, we give you the service. Could you give everybody at home one more time the website? It's uh, partman.com. Man, I need to thank you so much. We also need to thank your brother, Alex, who runs Lighthouse Marina. Your father, Larry, how Larry. cool was that? Yeah. Having him cool. on the program. Uh, Steve, uh, the head Pacus. mechanic, Lil and Pacus, incredible stuff. All the guys that were giving us these tips. But most importantly, that's right. We need to thank you for spending the last half hour of your valuable time with us right here on the beautiful water's edge. But we've got to go, but how about this? How about until we see each other again? Can you do yourself a favor? Can you get out there and make your boat ship shape? Of course you can. I'm John Graviscus, Cleek Galasso. We'll see you next time. I got an idea. What? Tonight, scallops. <laughs> huh? Huh, you feeling okay. me? I'm feeling All right. Feeling the love. Scallops. <laughs>